I kindly request Dr. R. Kumuda, Professor and Head, Department of Civil Engineering, to introduce our guest. So good morning to all. So I am very happy to introduce uh, Mr. Nagesh Puttaswamy to the participants. So he is an independent civil engineering professional, uh, trainer, mentor and skill enhancer. And uh, you know, regarding his educational qualification, um, he did his BE in civil engineering from University of Mysore. Uh, he has completed his BE in the year 1985. So since then, like uh, from 18, 1985 to 2006, uh, he worked as a consultant, uh, heading a sole proprietary firm, Nagesh Consultants, uh, which met the requirements of various clients pertaining to structural design of buildings. And uh, additionally, he has rendered a structural consultancy for various projects with several architects in Bangalore. And uh, he has also handled projects uh, uh, related to greenhouses for floriculture, then residential villas, apartments, industrial buildings, swimming pools, colleges, auditoriums, etc. And uh, he has in also involved himself in various rehabilitation works for factories and hospitals. And uh, after 2006, like, uh, uh, he joined in uh, Ultratech Cement Limited. So, uh, in Ultratech Cement Limited, actually, so from 2006 to 2020, um, he has uh, 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 wide experience in working in uh, uh, concrete mixes for challenging applications and uh, he's also got uh, a chance to work with uh, uh, unique concrete construction, uh, monolithic buildings and white topping of bitumen road etc. And uh, uh, during that particular tenure from 2006 to 2020, uh, he has also involved himself in various academic research work with MTech and PhD work in the field of concrete and concrete based construction works. And uh, he has uh, uh, associated himself in several research works, experimental works in concrete construction with several agencies and organizations. And from 2020 to 2022 in Ultratech Cement Limited, uh, he has involved in uh, implementation of uh, concrete overlay on bitumen roads across the country. And uh, he has also involved himself in uh, uh, quality management training of contractors, engineers, supervisors and also the grassroots worker and uh, again in that particular period uh, he has done some academic research also on uh, payment quality concrete and from uh, 2022 that is first November he is working as an independent civil engineering professional and he is also a trainer, mentor, <coughs> skill upgrading and quiz master and capturing for the requirement of civil engineering profession the academic institution and also the students to impart skills uh, or upgrade skills for the students and he is doing a lot of assistance in the project work for students, undergraduate students, postgraduate students and doctoral work students also. And uh, to his credit, uh, uh, he has received several awards and honors. Um, he is recognized as an outstanding engineer uh, for the contribution in concrete roads and monolithic building technology by the Institution of Engineers India, Mysore Centre and also as a structural consultant for uh, St. Mary's Church um, uh, Bahalkat. So he is awarded with ICA Karnataka Hubli Darwar Center Ultratech Outstanding Concrete Structure Institutional Building Section Award for the year 2007-2008. And he is an active member in various professional bodies like Institution of Engineers, ICI and uh, life member in several bodies, IRC and Life Fellow of Association of Consulting Civil Engineers. And uh, uh, coming to his uh, publications, so he has got a uh, um, number of publications on uh, international level as well as in the national level. And also he has been uh, assisting as an industry guide in several dissertation work as I mentioned, mentioned earlier for various uh, like uh, institutions for the final year civil engineering students in the field of structures and concrete and uh, he is associated with several institutes like NITK Suratkal, NMIT Bangalore and other institutions uh, for uh, the guidance of the students projects. So he has got so many publications to his credit and uh, uh, coming to the academic involvement, uh, he is serving as the member of board of studies in the various institutions 
um, an industrial advisor for various departments of uh, several institutions. And uh, he's also an invited master trainer for the skill in concrete, form work, masonry materials. So on uh, VTU campus. <coughs> So we are uh, really fortunate to have such a person with us today with a lot of credits. Uh, so I'm very happy to invite Mr. Nagesh Puttaswamy to deliver his keynote lecture. Welcome you, sir. always, uh, especially when you are getting older, uh, you always tend to take off a decade or a little more than a decade of my age and make me think younger when I talk to you people. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the institution, my good friend uh, Kumuda for inviting me over here to, to deliver the lecture. Uh, Majority of the people know me talking about concrete, 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 concrete. But uh, once I got the title somewhere in September or so when Kumuda called me and said that uh, she's organizing an event, I, she wanted me to come over here, I started thinking. I had just then got involved with the Green Building Council of uh, India and uh, sustainability, construction, and uh, all these things had prompted me to think about how differently we should think. Because everywhere I went, sustainability, green, or whatever we see, I was seeing people uh, talking about things in their own vertical. But uh, uh, very recently when I had a meeting with the National Highways and the Transportation Department uh, Ministry, there was a specific task given to all the people who are going to be there as trainers. Tell us what do you do about sustainability. That is when I went through these documents which I will take you. And today I thought, let me get out of my concrete. Let me talk more about management which the corporate field had taught me. Well, uh, energy, sustainability, carbon footprint is the buzz. If you had asked me four years ago or even three years ago, I would have always told you that it is a so-called elites uh, uh, concept of being in circulation, being in front of the TV camera and behind the mic. But as I started working with the National Highways Department and uh, I was fortunate to present a paper in Japan regarding the carbon footprint of concrete roads, then I realized what is it and how is it. And then somewhere two years ago I took an examination with the green buildings that is when I realized what is wrong. Why is this buzz coming out? And one word came to my life. You had been on a suicidal run. That's what my heart said to my mind. You had been on a suicidal run. Not to think about sustainability and green materials. Well, what is the situation? I'll briefly tell you. What is it? Why is sustainability? Why every institute, every company, every country is talking about this? All of you are seeing, all of you are hearing that there is undue and erratic climate change. You also have droughts in areas that had unheard of a drought. Then you have got floods in unexpected areas, floods to an extent that villages and towns were washed away. Heat wave in temperate zone. 
Throughout our life, geography taught us the European countries are in a temperate zone. You will not believe London city, this is a picture that uh, Hindustan Times also shared. Traffic signals where hoods, PVC was melting. And Paris recorded a temperature of 40 degrees. Imagine what is happening. Well, generally people say it is climate change. But what does a civil engineer has got to do? I will tell you, if something has to change, to change this, the heart of solving this problem is civil engineering. Why? We made it. We have to change it. Let us go ahead. Number one. It has been on for quite some time. People like uh, residents of Chennai, residents of Mangalore, residents of coastal cities have been hearing the sea level is increasing. Sea level, sea is taking over land, adjacent land. And a series of studies have been made and you will not believe that there is likely to be an increase of 6 meters by 2100 that means whole of Chennai will be inside seawater more than half of Mumbai will be in seawater many cities in coastal Karnataka coastal uh, uh, the states of Kerala will be underwater that means we are vanishing cities we are vanishing our ports which have been the lifeline for our import export business and this is what Things are going on and apart from that, what is the temperature changes? Now, because of these temperature changes, crop yielding has changed, crop cycle has changed, the temperatures at which the cover, a certain vegetable or a certain fruit has to bear flowers are not able to bear because the temperature is high or low, the flowers are withering away. When the flowers wither away, no more food for us. Apart from this, because it is becoming arid, sudden uh, forest fires, forest drying out, sea waters pollution and the concentration of salts are varying rapidly. All these things are affecting human body both internally, externally and in affecting us indirectly also because the food that we are consuming are either polluted or it is lacking certain nutrition. All this I told is a complex communication between you and me. Anybody understood why, how, what I told you so long? No, you cannot because it looks complicated. Well, the world also knew that it is complicated. First, human tendency, when there is a problem that I have got to be not so easily solvable, try to ignore that problem till I am pressurized to survive. We did that, but when we actually realized what is this climate change is all about, the first action that took place was a knee jerk. Ban. Don't do this. Don't do that. Now, because these decisions came at world level, the world was divided into two, two halves. A few countries, so called developed countries on one side, a large consortium of countries who were underdeveloped or developing countries on the other side. Simple humanitarian questions were asked. You took out whatever you want from mother nature. You did whatever you have to do to come to this stage. When we are trying to improve our livelihood, we are trying to improve our living style, you are preventing us. So we don't come with you. This is the map, developed countries, 
newly industrialized countries, thank God, from past 15-20 years, liberalization of economics, we are in the newly developed, industrialized countries, developing and underdeveloped. Please look at this. The underdeveloped countries are concentrated in one continent and one corner. That brings a major imbalance. And these two corners where you see the underdeveloped countries is actually the lung space of this world. That is where the natural diversities are available. It is the far eastern countries, the middle African countries. Now, they have to develop. What do we do? Well, go through United majority of the content here or the data that was given to me when I took the examination of sustainable development uh, and uh, that is how it is there. Majority of it, uh, I have to give credit for the United Nations uh, Development Authority. Well, the few points that I would like to tell here is high levels of quality life, strong health and social security system. I don't believe in that political stability. Uh, high per capita income, high human development index, high level of employment, low levels of socio-economic inequality. All these things need your entire country or your entire area to develop holistically, giving more employment, having more flow of money, that means business or industry, all these things need construction. Who is the maximum <coughs> pollutant in the construction uh, in this world? 40% of world's pollution comes from construction industry. Because we never upgraded ourselves for the newer technology so easily. We did not optimize on our spending of materials. So all these things. The exact opposite happens here. See, the number of points, we cannot even meet in number of points that is available for comparison. Simple, strong dependence on agricultural sector, very little industry, so there is no alternate labor. Then, low levels of quality life, that defines it all. When you have both these problems, the others cannot come at all. So, what do we do? The underdeveloped and developed countries have to cope up to increase the standard of their living to compete in this world. Otherwise, we will be thrown out. So, what do we do? Not easy. Not very easy. From past 25, 30 years, much before this sustainability index and all these things came out, United Nations had a program. They had listed out some of the challenges, that is bringing equality in humanity. That is what the slogan was in those days. That means we have to make relatively comparable living style, relatively comparable health, relatively comparable um, employment opportunity for all the people, education, all these things were there. So they divided typical management techniques, they divided their final goal into smaller goals and they said first eradicate poverty for which they said different dimensions. If you have to remove poverty, you have to educate them. If you have to educate them, you have to build schools. After education, you have to skill enable them so that they get more different diversion uh, employments. Accelerating structural reforms for development. When my country has got resources but very bad roads, what happens? No one will come to buy what you have, isn't it? Many times in, in our own country, even to go to meet my parents in village, sometimes we do hesitate, right? We always think of the final 20-30 kilometers of bad road we have to face. 
there is an excitement to meet the parents but still back of the mind it hurts ah that last 25 kilometers last 50 kilometers are horrible here i would have gone to school i would have spent my childhood on that road but still after looking at a standard of living i look at the negative points there what has happened actually what has happened countries like america europe they have extracted from mother nature they have not got anything from sky they have extracted what they want from mother nature to reach the stage where they are fortunately geo geo system geopolitical system they were in a better opposition they extracted but today the problem is everybody is trying to extract the same resources whatever those four or five six countries had extracted for coming to that level 10 times of that we are trying to extract to grow and come to their somewhere around 60 percent of their level now the world is suffering because they are at a higher comfort level they don't want to lose the comfort they try to impose rule the regulations on others does that mean we had strong countries 10 years ago 12 years 15 years ago we had strong countries on this side we had china we had india where more than 60 percent of the population of the world lives so we took the leadership of the other countries this is not feasible you arrive at a system where you allow us to grow you give us the technology where we are growing we do not do the same mistakes that you did when you grew so this started with united nations coming out with certain policies well these are all the points that i got from the course that i underwent these are available go to the undp website you get all this information but what here is two challenging things for us as human beings and specifically us as civil engineers you can see here keeping people out of property employment roads food cash flow gdp that means those are the opportunities for you to get your job to get your business done well equality housing health social security again requires building and construction safety against natural calamity calamities what you heard from couple of speakers since yesterday i am ready to build a building at least my core buildings of my requirement of my community should be in such a way that they do not fall and anticipate me to rebuild them after an earthquake that means i have to enable my skill levels to one